to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who truly is the head of my life. We give honor to the pastor, so, uh, sister pastor, our first lady, and all the saints of God that are gathered here, uh, visitors and friends. And we just praise God for this day and uh, for even for our, the pastor allowing us to have a day. And uh, the Lord just uh, put upon my heart to have this, you know, have this little program uh, for the women. We, I, don't, I guess it's been about four years now that we've been meeting every month, every other Monday, the second and the fourth, uh, the first and the third Monday of every month. And uh, we have discussions and we're, uh, we really just kind of go over everything and, and just, you know, a lot of people say, why do you have that? But, you know, it's uh, when the women come together and we're learning how to be women of excellence. You know, the kind of women that God wants in these last and evil days. And, uh, you know, sometimes it started off kind of slow, but now we just, it's just growing. And uh, even a sister, uh, sister, our first lady, she brought the, brings her girls, and now they said they want to be in it. They, they really enjoy it. But, uh, you know, we've had uh, all kinds, you know, we, if there's problems and people like with the children or home or trying to, you know, how to make things go smooth, you know, because we're, we're alive in this world. And, uh, the women are, aren't just going to be speaking to women on this morning because we all should be doing our best for God. You know, we ought to be living our best because the Lord is, that's what he requires me. And uh, I'm, we're going to, um, they're going to come bring people. But the Lord just gave me something. It was, I think it was last week. And I'm going to share, share. I'm going to try to be as brief as I can. But it's, uh, you know, we're living in, people may not know it, but these are the last days. It's so much, I mean, there's like nothing, you know, sometimes things happen. If you have a hurricane, it runs, comes through here, things knock things out, they start putting things back together, and life goes on. But it just seems like one thing after another is happening, and so much is going on in these days. But so I spend my time, you know, a lot of times when we're, when we were shut in, I, I call it just a, just a time to get away from them and get in your word and, and see God. But a lot of times people just don't realize or they take God for granted. And the Lord, you know, and I was just like, I said, Lord, I just want to know you just a little bit more. And just even the story of salvation, the Lord gave it to me. He says, you know, when he made man, he made, he said he breathed his breath into us. And he made us, he said, let's make man in our image. So God is Alpha and Omega. We're made to live forever. No, and whether people know it or not, in this body, just like Jesus died in this body, he rose up. He, well, he's our perfect example. But we're all going to die one of these days. And when we die and leave this world, there's another place to go. And it's either heaven or hell. You know, because people just, you, I mean, no matter how young, you know, how, how old you get, you still have that same that spirit like you just want to go on and, and your spirit doesn't ever die. You know, sometimes I say, oh, boy, you know, you could, wish you could do things you were 20 years old. Your mind is there, but this body is slowing down. You know, it doesn't do what it used to. But the Lord just showed me, he says that people don't take it seriously. Why Jesus came down here, because when he made those souls to last forever, that meant that, you know, when he saw men and he, they were sinning so badly from the very beginning, he, then he sent, told Noah to build an ark and he asked people to repent. And God was so angry, he destroyed the whole world, everybody except Noah and his family. And he said, I repented that I made man because it grieved his heart. You know, if you, and that they didn't obey him, they ran. And so he said, you know, Jesus, he sent Jesus down here to save us. And so we're here to please God, whether we know it or not. You know, people say, you know, I come here, you got to get the best education. You got to get the best thing, the best house. And people are seeking those materialistic things and, and a, a statue. You know, people looking up to them, want to be lifted up in pride. But God said, I don't want that. He, want, he wants us to love him. That's why Jesus came, so that we can be reconciled back to the Father. Because, and when he came, he showed us a way, but people aren't thinking about that. If we don't accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and accept him, you know, when God comes back, he's just gonna come and get his own. And then the rest of them, they're going on and people don't wanna talk about going. I said, why people don't talk about hell? 
that hell is real. And I, you know, and, I, and every time I, I said, Lord, I don't want to miss heaven. Because you think about forever. You know, you forever, forever, there's no end. You know, you're going wait, to wake up, you know, you may go to sleep and you're going to wake up with your eyes in hell if you don't know God. If you don't know him, if you haven't accepted him as the same, because God said, I sent my son down there. So just so he could draw, you know, he wants the people to be with him. You know, Adam and Eve, when he put them in the garden, he, you know, he came down, he loved them. They were just sweet and obedient and everything and he just wanted to walk with them and that's how he wanted men to be but then sin came disobedience came into the world and people became disobedient to God and now you know God Jesus came to say you know if you accept me as your Lord and say just believe in me you know I'll take you back to heaven with me but if you don't you know it's going it's to be a, it's going to be sad and the, you know so many people just dying and going in and not knowing you know accepting Jesus don't even care you know they don't even think about it. all people want now is to get uh, please go away corona so we can go back to where we want you know where we were doing and you know go, doing what you want to do and everything like that but if corona don't come away go away and they catch you and you go you know what well, you know you you want to wake up in, in heaven you know we sometimes people are so scared of dying but we need to be afraid of being rejected by God you know and we need to live our life to the best and so we have the women of Exodus. We've talked and we've talked and we've discussed pretty much, pretty much of everything. But uh, we have when we meet uh, on those Mondays, the first and the third Mondays at six o'clock, then we'd have a pledge. And uh, on the front of our, the part of our program says becoming a woman, of, a woman of excellence. And each we take turns uh, leading. So the words that are in bold uh, print. Someone leads out and says that, and then the others follow. But the, uh, so we're not going exactly in that order, but the Lord just gave me, uh, the speakers are gonna be talking about this subject that are coming before you today. And so uh, we start, told them five minutes, but we said three to five if you want. But we, you know, we know that we're, we're I don't wanna see the clock, we're doing good, so. Uh, just when you get up and speak, let God use you. Don't be afraid. Don't be listening for a bell or whatever like that. God's just going to speak through us and just, you know, let, let people know. And we're not just talking to the women. We're talking to everyone because God wants all of us to do a, live an excellent life so that we can make it in. At this time, we're going to start our program. Our, our first speaker is talking about love Jesus and we all should love Jesus. Praise our sister Naomi start. And then guys, sit down, then you just follow. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I don't know why I'm nervous. I get up here anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay, mine's was love. There's nothing more amazing than the love of the Lord. Jesus is love. God's love is my testimony. Without the love of the Lord on my side, I wouldn't have made it. God's love never left me. I went through a stage in my life, I'm not going to read the paper. I went in through a stage in my life where I went through depression and um, fear, and I went through a mental breakdown. Nobody understood, I didn't understand. At the time that I went through everything, I was tormented by the devil. I wouldn't leave the house. I stopped eating. I wouldn't drink. I went from went all the way to 109, was going lower than that. And finally, I seeked help. Um, I was afraid, you know, embarrassed. You know, people always say, well, you know, and we always make comments of like, you go on, you know, we always make comments about, oh, girl, I'm gonna go crazy if I do this, I'll go crazy. You gotta watch what you say because I felt like those words I spoke back then came back to me. And when I went through it, I, I lost myself. I lost myself. I prayed and I prayed and I was asking God, where are you, where are you? I was afraid and I kept saying, you know, the devil had me thinking God's not here. He doesn't hear you. You can continue to you know, call on the Lord, but he's not gonna answer. And it got to that point that that stronghold took over. So, Throughout it all, God sent, you know, people to me. He sent Lisa Johnson. I thank you. He sent Lisa Johnson. She came every day and ministered God's word to me. And it got to the point where I got dependent on her. So she stopped coming. 
because all along God was telling me, you need to depend on me. So going through that, I learned to depend on the Lord. Then Lalisa brought me here to Pastor Murphy. Thank you, Pastor Murphy. And to Sister Vasha, thank you. I love you guys. Because when I came here, there was times that I would sit back there and I would be shaken. And Sister Vasha said she saw a demon. So when the pastor talk about demons, they're real. Because a demon was on me. And Sister Vasha saw that demon and that demon said that he wasn't gonna let me go. But God. <laughs> God said, I'm his child, and that nobody can take me from his hands. So, with that being said, I love the Lord with all my heart, my mind, and my soul. And if you don't know the Lord, please get to know him. Thank you. Giving honor to God, pastors, and all the saints. Yes, I'm nervous, but I'm going to do the best I can. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to speak a little bit on, first of all, Lord, <laughs> let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing unto you so I can get this right. But anyway, I'm going to speak on Godly, godly wisdom. Okay, to be godly is to be devoted to God. Follow him, wanting to do his will and his work. And it would be, you would have to, ooh, I'm nervous. <laughs> now wisdom is the principal thing Therefore, you have to get a understanding with him. And the understanding that you can get comes from above. That is with, with God. And in James, it says, James 1 and 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of it. And God will give it to all. It's a little more, but I'm going to cut it short. Okay. In Corinthians, it says, For wisdom of the world is foolishness. Right. Yes, it is. With God. For it is written, He that keepeth, he that taketh the wise in their... Ooh, I'm just nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for it is written, he that taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Proverbs 8 and 11 says, for wisdom is better than rubies. All the things that may be desired are not to be compared. So seek the Lord above. And that's where your wisdom and understanding and knowledge comes from, if you know the Lord. Because each of us know him for our own selves. So I can speak. I've been where Naomi. I've dealt with demons. But I'm good. I'm good. He wakes me up every day. Glory to him. Glory, glory to him. But wisdom is from above. And understanding and knowledge. Thank you. Good morning. Sorry, I'm kind of nervous. The honesty prayer, usually our ideas of earnesty prayers involve going to God with hands tightly closed, eyes squeezed shut, 
and hours spinning on our knees and pray to God to the honesty prayers. Amen. And he did bring me in a miracle. My prayers, my lamp is gone. Thank you for Jesus. Christ, thank you so much. Amen. Thank you for past. <laughs> making my way, sorry. Um, I, like all my sisters before me, am very nervous. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, yes, let me get collected here. So, uh, my subject is no compromises. So, which, fits perfectly with me, as the Lord knows, because that's exactly uh, my testimony. I, um, when I was like 18 through 22, I was hanging out with, with wrong people, and I had known the Lord. I, was, I got saved in my grandma's house when I was 10, and um, started going to church at 12, but it was very spotty. It's not at all um, regular. And uh, so I started hanging out with people who um, would go out to the bars and all that. And, and I, I mean, I, I went anyway because I was like, well, they're my friends, they're having fun, and I just want to have fun. But I, I mean, the Lord really, really took care of me because I was, I was doing some things. I had, remember one time we had gone to Alice, Texas, and we had both been drinking, and we drove back here at 3 in the morning, fog on the road. I mean, nobody but the Lord because that could have ended badly. So, you know, I, um, I thank God that he had kept me. And... Um, and even though, you know, I would have too much to drink, and when I would lay down and the room would be spinning, I'd have to say, let, let me pray, let me pray, though, let me pray. And so, so I just say, thank you, Jesus, same it. Like, just something short, you know, just out of my mind. And, and so, um, I mean, I just, I thank God, because either I was, I was going out on Saturday nights, I was running all over town, or I was just sleeping in, and I... Uh, I would think, you know, well, I'll just sleep in. I'll just go next Sunday. And the next Sunday, oh, I'm tired. I'll sleep in. I'll go next Sunday. And, I, you know, I kept making those excuses, and, and I wouldn't go. And, and uh, thank God for my grandmother, who would help me during this time. And call, yeah, call me. She, she would say, are you going to come to church today? Or, or, like, don't you sleep in now? And I was sleeping and everything. But I, I thank God for her. She's been with me through, my, through, through everything. And... Um, and, you know, even though I, I was saved and I knew the Lord, I didn't have a strong relationship at all. I mean, I would go mostly on Wednesdays, but every once in a while. And uh, like uh, Brother Dooley said uh, last Sunday in Spiritual Empowerment, that that lady thought her pastor stole her spoon, but she put it in the Bible. Uh, he put it in the Bible and she never read it. That was me for two, two years. I never w would read the Bible. And so it wasn't until um, we, we went to uh, Mississippi one year and I, you know, got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I mean, out on the floor. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Because at, at that point, when I, was, when I was, you know, laid out, just thank the Lord for his presence and for the Holy Spirit, I said, I'm not going to do any of that anymore. I didn't, I didn't have any desire to. And now I, I get up, and even though I'm tired or something, I wake up because I want to come here, and I want to worship and praise the Lord because he's brought me through everything. So, and so um, I just thank God. And, and, you know, my friend that I used to go out and do all those things with, she, she had texted me back in February, and she was like, I miss going out and, you know, being crazy and stuff, and I, and I, I was like, you know, I, I don't do that anymore. I don't, I just don't, I don't have any place, you know, I just don't want to do it. I just, and, and my, my cousin also tells me, she's the same age as me, and she's like, you need to go out and experience your 20s and go out and have fun and stuff, but, but honestly, I, I mean, 
I have such a fulfilling life just following the Lord and just going to work. I mean, that's all I need. That's all I need. So I just, <laughs> um, I just thank God for, for bringing me through everything that he has. And I do have uh, one scripture here, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Sorry, please bear with me, y'all. Okay, yeah, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 7, where Paul, um, he's, you know, he's dying and he's saying, I have fought the good fight and I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And that's very important for us to do um, because, you know, nothing that we can experience on this earth or anything that we may have, nothing is worth what we have and what we will have when we get to heaven. Nothing's worth what we have in Jesus, as I'm saying. So, so I thank God uh, for being here today, and I hope that my testimony was, will encourage somebody on today. And um, yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> I thank the Lord for being here and in the midst of the ladies and like um, um, Mother Murphy was saying earlier um, it is everything that we're speaking about is the job of every person um, if you notice on the program my word is compassion compassion does not have a gender compassion compassion doesn't have a color it was talked to us even starting from our youth. Um, when we were young, our teachers tell us, share, yes. be kind. And then you come to church and hear, do unto others as you have them do unto you. You know, those things that we're supposed to know. And I was thinking, um, my husband, you know, he's always preaching, always, never stops. <laughs> and he was saying a scripture that um, meant, um, meant something to him. And I'd been trying to figure out how to bring everything because I told him I was going to be like two minutes, and then I started writing. <laughs> I'm not letting her pull my coattail, so I'm not going to be up here long. Uh, but just, I started seeing a whole lot of things in the Word of God where he was compelling us to do, to go towards this calling, to go towards compassion, because he did it all for us. Um, the scripture that I had was um, Matthew 9:36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And I was thinking about all the times that you see on the TV, the commercials that come on and it used to be Sally Struthers and different ones that say, help feed these people in Africa, you know? And then you turn on the radio and they say, help us stay on the air. And how many times I changed the channel or, you know, trying to find the next song and the next thing, when the truth was I should have been listening. And not because I can do all those things. The thing about compassion is that it looks differently on everybody. One person may be called to that, uh, to reach the multitudes there, and another person may be called to just do something simple in the place that they are at. So it is ours to know and not to feel embarrassed or, or ashamed by it, because some, because somebody may only have a dollar and someone else have a thousand. It is ours to have that love of Christ in our heart to do something. So I was, I was looking and I was going through all the things that I was, you know, I was feeling negative about, you know, like, man, I should do that more, or looking at different ones who do so many things. I got to see something beautiful, and the Lord showed me in the last two weeks, and I had to write it down because every day it was something new uh, for the last two weeks. But I got to see compassion uh, leave church just to go bring back food for somebody who had the need. I got to see compassion care for the sick. 
I got to see Compassion stand before young people and old people and tell them, encourage them about the Word of God and try to encourage people to live for the Lord. I saw that Compassion. I got to see Compassion give somebody a hug. I got to see Compassion give somebody a ride because they needed it. I got to see Compassion um, pray again and again for people who just needed prayer. And it didn't discriminate to who, it just offered it freely. I also got to see compassion be turned down. I got to see it be, you know, discarded as something that, that wasn't, you know, pleasant to another person, but it was still offered in good grace. Not in, you know, you know how we have those moments where we like, well, you don't have to take it, you know, nothing like that. But I got to see it taken in good grace. I got to see passion provide, uh, compassion provide delicious baked goods for breakfast when we're on our way to service. <laughs> when we're in the middle of service, I got to see Compassion make coffee. I got to see Compassion clean up a mess that it didn't make. And I got to see Compa Compassion encourage a pastor in a text, just encouraging him to do better. All those things are compassion. Don't assume that your compassion has to look like the next person's compassion, but do do what God said. Do what the word of the Lord says. He is filled in here in the word of God with um, times where that compassion was needed. It was needed when the prodigal son came home and that father had to look past the wretch that his son had become and see a person that was deserving of celebrating. Go figure. It had to look past a woman, or I'm sorry, a person on the side of the road, a man on the side of the road who had been beaten by robbers and had to look past its nationality. It had to look past its um, political stances. It had to look past what other people would say about it and take that person. And not only did it take that person to an end, it also gave up financial, you know, its own finance, gave up its own finances. It gave up um, anybody saying, why are you helping those people? It had to do all that when the Good Samaritan helped that person on the side of the street and ours has to be similar. We, I want to encourage everybody, and I'm going to finish there because I'm way longer than I want to be. <laughs> but I want to encourage you with Philemon, the first chapter and the sixth verse, and this is NLT, says Paul is talking to Philemon, and he's just telling him, you know, thank you, basically. He says, and I'm praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ, your love has given me joy and comfort my brother for your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. Let us be just like that. Praise God, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Bless the Lord. I'm speaking on integrity, and I thank the Lord. We are so richly blessed, praise God. Um, we know in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and he made a man and woman. He made us in his image, like himself, praise God. And I thank the Lord for God being God, sovereign God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I thank the Lord for, um, praise God for you, Pastor Murphy, so say Pastor Johnson. Murphy and everybody. Bless the Lord. But I thank God to know that he is omnipresent everywhere at the same time. He's omnipotent. All power in heaven and earth is in his hand. And he's omniscient. Oh my, mm -mm. He knows everything. And I thank God. And talking about in integrity, God knows all and he sees all. And that's blessing, praise the Lord. And um, uh, hmm. Mm. With the Lord done everything and how he loved us so much, and as Sister Murphy began, that uh, God um, made a way for us to be reconciled with himself. Through his son Jesus, he gave us a way to be forgiven for all of our sins, uh, knowing that he loved us so much and he had a way made for us. And um, it's open to everybody, praise the Lord. Um, once the Lord saves us, he gives us such a holy love for him that we don't want to hurt his heart in any kind of way. 
We want to please the Lord in everything we do. And thanking God, I used to tell the children when I taught in school, I said, if I got up under that little cabinet, a little bitty thing, you know, as if I could, if I got up under there and I started writing on the wall or calling names and saying bad things, I said, nobody else would see me, but God would see me. He knows everything, all of our thoughts, you know, what's in our heart, what's on our mind. And um, we might fool a whole lot of people, but we can never fool the Lord. And so I want to just want to want to be pleasing in his sight, praise God. Don't want to hurt his heart and knowing that he loves us so much. Uh, in Psalm 25, 21, the Lord says, he said, let integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait on thee. And I thank God for his holy word, Genesis to Revelation, because he makes people tell on themselves. That really, really blessed me when I began to see how different ones would, uh, you know, uh, like you're uncovered. I even used to tell the children when uh, they were younger, I say, um, if a child is told, put your toys up, get washed and ready for bed. And then the child stays in there and keeps on playing, keeps on playing, keeps on playing. And after a while, they hear footsteps coming. And what do they do? They jump in the bed under the cover and act like they sleep. But guess what happens? Mama and daddy, hmm, the Holy Ghost lead them. And they pull that cover off, and there they are, fully clothed. And they haven't done anything of what they were told. We can hide from any and everybody, but we can never hide from the Lord. He knows our secret thoughts. You know what's in our heart, praise the Lord. And we just want to love on the Lord back. We want to be upright and honest in his sight, pleasing. And the way to do that is the word, Hava. The word, the word of God. Just keep on eating and eating and eating. Thy words were found and I did eat them and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. In Jeremiah 15, 16. His word is so sweet to our soul. And when we find ourselves in a, in a place where there's upset going on or something troubling and so much on our mind, Another portion, praise the Lord, in Psalm 94, 19. Sister Vasha helped me with that one. Um, uh, in the multitude of my thoughts, thy comforts delight my soul. Just, just all of what's going on in my mind and in our life, praise the Lord. The word of the Lord, he just brings comfort and he brings such peace. And if we just stop for a little moment, just for a moment, even rehearse in your spirit, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He'll settle you right on down. And he does it just like that, praise the Lord. He doesn't take all day. Uh, in, in Acts, in, when he talks about um, they were in jail and they prayed and they worshiped the Lord, Paul and Silas, and they went on and then midnight came. But when do you want your midnight, praise the Lord? It can come right now. You don't have to wait until tomorrow or the next day. But God is just so wonderful. And, and again, omniscient, praise God, knowing all. And he loves us so much. He has all that, uh, everything that we stand in need of, praise the Lord. And that integrity. We want to be upright and well-pleasing in the sight of the Lord. The word of the Lord is right. And his word will find us. Praise the Lord. God bless you. <laughs> <coughs> Destiny. <clears throat> Destiny has two meanings. Destiny in the world and destiny in God. Destiny in the world, the world feels that we control our future. We choose what we want to happen in our life. We control our destiny. And I am reminded of when I was growing up, I had a plan. I was going to graduate, go to college, become a teacher, and take care of my mom, make a lot of money, buy nice cars, a nice house, all that. That was my plan. <clears throat> but destiny in God, <clears throat> Proverbs 20 and 24, it is the Lord who directs your life. The Lord who directs your life. For each step you take is ordained by God to bring you closer to your destiny. So much of your life then remains a mystery. And of course, I didn't do what I had planned because God took over. I met my husband, we got married, we got saved, thank you Jesus. We uh, joined the church and the Lord directed my life. So the world thinks I'm in control. I have my plans. I wanna do what I wanna do, I have my goals, but God, has our plans. He directs our lives. <clears throat> we come to a 
<clears throat> know the Lord, we understand that it is he who is direct in our lives, not us ourselves. It is he whom we should please, not us, us ourselves. If Ephesians, <coughs> pray for me. <coughs> Ephesians 1 and 11 says, <coughs> through our union with Christ, we too have, be, have been claimed by God as his own inheritance. Before we were even born, before we were even born, God already knew us. He, he already had a plan. I forgot to take my inhaler this morning. <laughs> Before we were even born, we were in our, mom, in our mom's stomach. He already had a plan. He had a plan for Mary A. He had a plan for everybody. He, he gave us our destiny that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. And when I read that and I think about my life, because I was brought up in a godless home. My daddy left when I was two and all we were around was drugs, alcohol, men, you know the story. That's what we were brought up in. And I didn't understand why God had saved me Mary A. I mean, why me? Why me? But when he saved me, I was able to go back home and tell them about Jesus. I was able to let them see that there's a different way of life. We don't have to live the way we are living. And because of me getting saved, I'm not bragging, but because of me getting saved, two of my sisters got saved. And then two of my brothers got saved. So God, God knew why he uh, saved me and the plan that he had for me. I didn't understand. But he was leading me. He had a plan. He had a plan. Romans 8 and 28 says, So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan. And that was God's perfect plan. Even though I didn't understand what was going on, I didn't know why I had gotten saved, God knew of uh, every, God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we love God, we have been called to fulfill his, his design purpose. And that it's God is calling us to fulfill his design purpose. You might say, oh, I want to be this, I want to be that. But don't leave God out of it. Always, I tell my daughter, my oldest daughter, because she's very educated, I'm like, Lisa, don't leave God out of your plans. Put God first and you will excel in him. But if you don't put God in it, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Our plans and our goals, our ambitions, and our amb ambitions are his. They're not ours. They, they are his. And I just thank God for that. <laughs> thank you for your prayers. Praise the Lord, saints of God. Uh, I was trying, I asked the Lord to give me a song for this morning, but he didn't give it to me. <laughs> Aren't y'all glad? <laughs> but uh, I'm just so thankful to God that he saved me and uh, all the great things that has been happening to me that, uh, that I have been saved. So I'm just, I'm just standing here, ladies, y'all did a beautiful job. You did a beautiful job. I thought by, by the time I got here, I'd be painted back there in the back. But <laughs> thanks be to God. That's just how good he is. That's just how good he is. <laughs> he takes care of us. If we, stand, if we stand up, he'll stand by us and won't let the enemy uh, defeat us. <laughs> My uh, topic today is the promises of God. And the Bible is filled with promises of God. Uh, and these promises, not only for me, they're also for you also. <laughs> From Genesis to Revelations, we read of normal people that receive the promises of God. These promises are sealed by the highest authority, God's word. In Hebrews 6, 13, it says, for when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself. When God makes a promise to his people, it will come to pass. What is a promise? A promise is a covenant of declaration that one will do exactly what they say or something will happen just as pledged. Behold, my covenant is with you and ye shall be the father of a multitude of nations. Genesis 
17 and 4. When God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 17 and 4, he declared that he would bless him and make him a father of many nations. This is exactly what we see throughout the Bible and history. Philippians 4 and 19 says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Another promise, Philippians 4, 6 and 9. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Another, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an, an expected end. You know, I, something I, I, I found out in reading uh, about all these promises, there's over 5,000 promises in the Bible. Yeah. See, when you read the Bible, you find out a whole lot of things that you didn't know. You, so it's just so wonderful. And this is just a part, just a little tip of the iceberg. I tell you, I just read so many promises. I said, well, this one, I want that one. I want to do this one. Kim said, Mommy, you can't do them all now. <laughs> The nation of Israel was going through a time of oppression. They would spend 70 years in captivity, but God would be waiting for them with plans to prosper them, not plans of evil, but of hope, love, and peace. The Lord loves his people, and this promise shows his relentless pursuit in our lives. God has good plans for us, filled with hope and a future. Promise, Oop, let me put this paper back. Uh, Psalms 37 and four. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Woo, I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> uh, he has given me desires of my heart. A lot of times we want things and, 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 and oh God, no, 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 you don't need that. No, I want this guy. No, 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 you don't need that. But then there's certain things that you ask for that you just want, and he will give them to you. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call to his purpose. Sometimes life doesn't turn out the way we thought it would. At times, circumstances outside of our control into our life and put us in a place of struggle or pain. Even bad things happen to the people of God. But Paul wrote, all things work together for good. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God's love turns it around. Power are enough to turn around for good. For the purpose of God in him are yes and in him, amen to the glory of God through us, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. Paul reminds us that the promises of God are rock solid. If God said something, it will come to pass. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and believe him at his word. God isn't a man, his promises are guaranteed. Whereby, are given unto us exceeding great precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. It's a promise, John 5, 7, 8. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever ye will, and it shall come, it shall be done unto you promise John 3 and 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life don't worry about death we're going somewhere we're going somewhere we're going somewhere my kids never liked me talking about death but I don't bother me anymore it doesn't bother me anymore because I know where I'm going. Hallelujah. 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 And that's a promise. That's a promise. He said he, he'd never forsake us. Psalms 23, 1 through 6, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
Ask him for whatever you will. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you, Matthew 6, 33. As life goes on, we forget our foundation as the people of God. Sometimes we began to play up. Uh, I wrote P-L-A-V-E, and it placed other things. It should have been placed other things before the Lord. And the verse is a perfect reminder of his promise. If we put him first in all things, seeking the kingdom of God, and his righteousness will open the door to all other needs in the world, financial needs, relationships, and even small details that can be overlooked. And I heard some testimonies this morning how God has come in and how he has worked in your life. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need, Hebrews 4 and 16. When we need mercy and grace, his word promises that if we draw near to the throne of God, we receive and find it there. Prayer is our connection to God. He is ready to listen. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Revelations 3 and 5, Jesus promises us that we will never be blotted out of the book of life. Once it is written, hallelujah, it is sealed with his promise to keep forever. One sal our salvation is guaranteed. Jesus will confess our name before the Father and the angels. And let's thank God, let's thank God that we have a Father who cares. Hallelujah, someone who loves us and never doubt us. Oh God, we doubt him, but he never doubts us. So I ask today, you need to reach out and touch. Touch him, touch God, because he is our everything. He's my everything. Make him your everything. Make him your everything, because he will work it out for you. God bless. Praise God. We're going to give all the women a hand on this morning. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And it's so true. You know, it's, oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I mean, God is good. So when you start reading the words, you know, the word of God, there's just so much, so much love and so much hope and joy in it, you know. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have my seat. It's just uh, thinking about where, uh, it's, it's something my brother always used to say that, you know, if, if heaven was never promised to me, even if, uh, you know, if I don't even make it to heaven, it was, it'll be worth serving the Lord. You know, people are like, oh, I don't want to be saved. There's so many strength. You know, I'm so happy. I wake, every time I wake up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. You know, you have such much peace, you know, and so much joy. And you know that no matter what comes in your life, it's going to be all right. Because as she was talking about those promises of God, God said, I'll take, you with, take care of you. He said, I'll be with you. To, to always, always, even to the end of the earth. You know, so if the world is coming to the end, you know, sometimes people are like, well, it's scary, but God said he's going to be with me. So he, I mean, he gonna, he's going to hold you in his hand. He said nothing's going to come. Now, you know, it's just like so many people always say, like a mother, you know, you can live all the same one, but people mess with your children. You know, you're like, well, what do you think about God? He's got us like that. And he don't like people messing with, you know, but so he's taking care of us. And I thank God for being in my life. I thank the Lord for the beautiful women of God and how they just, you know, so willingly uh, brought the word on this morning. It was just a blessing to my soul. I'm going to go back into the hand of the pastor. Praise 